What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz in our WTF series. Sony, Amazon are going to bring to us something that we've been waiting for for quite some time, Brian. So we're getting all these announcements. First of all, I don't know. It started with Madam Web. Oh, and now it started <laughs> with Venom. Yeah, but if we're being fair, if we're being fair, okay. Even though that, that was true, a true, 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 financial true. home run. Since the first it one, yes. Started with Venom. Go ahead. Correct. What happened with the second one? Well, I mean, the, the opening weekend was bigger. The overall box office was smaller. Still firmly profitable. You can't you can't knock the franchise with Tom Hardy okay. from a money stamp money standpoint. It's a winner. Okay. So now we're we start off with, with with Venom. Now we're getting Madam Web out of nowhere. Oh, Morbius came and went. Oh, Morbius See, is you, so, forget, you forgot Mo it. it was Morbius so is so forgettable. Yeah. This movie is so forgettable, man. And I haven't seen the movie from start to finish. I've tried. Then we get to Madam Web which I think is going to be another horrendous horror show. Now we're getting uh, Silk. Craven. Craven. Oh. Craven the Hunter, man. Don't forget. <laughs> that's a wow. great character, too. And that's a I shame. know. You see, yo, the, these announcements of these films are so forgettable that, and that when you are reminded of them you just roll your eyes you, that expression this is not rehearsed ladies and gentlemen this is not rehearsed these are true emotions you're seeing from me i think madam webb by the way broke the record for most set photos leaked i know right it's like to the internet have you ever seen a production where there were more blurbs about what they were <laughs> shooting daily than that project these are people these are these are people that are like yo let's put this out let's get let's let's get the fans dude you are just this is gonna be horrendous but it's crazy because it was like they you know they cast dakota johnson and the character right so then it was like oh the character's old in the comics but then there's a younger version of it and then it's like we were getting like a press release every day we got sydney sweeney we got mike Epps. <laughs> What's going on here? Like, there's like more people in this movie than in Chris Nolan's Oppenheimer. I'm like, this is what we're talking about. WTF is going on? Like, you would think this project had a, like a James Cameron sized budget. I know. I don't understand. And I've always said this, Brian. I've always said this. My fear is that Sony will get a swelled head and think that they can do this on their own. And there's nothing wrong with them thinking that they can do it, but they're, the thing is that they are attempting it. And so far, what we've seen, we haven't seen the worst of the worst. Do you think Morbius was bad? There's going to be much worse coming our way. Venom was like winning the lotto. I don't know. They, 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 they made mad money off that first one. And so now we're getting this Silk show, which I'm pretty sure a lot of females out there are going to be very hyped for it because there's a lot of cosplay around this character. So there's going to be a fan base there, yeah. Brian, where is this going? Do you think... There is a future for this, or do you think that? And I know we keep uh, the horribleness that we are about to see. Will the cries for "We want Spidey back in the MCU" get louder? I mean, well, Tom Holland got his money. Sounds like he's coming back. <laughs> Sounds like he got paid. Yeah. But you know, the silk thing, it 
it's not that any individual character has to be a failure. So, you know, we, we pump Andor as much as anybody on the internet right now, right? So yeah. that's the perfect example of something that like on the surface, you're like, well, why would that be great? But yes, the second right. I see that Tony Gilroy is running it, I know it's going to be good. Got it. So the right creator, any character can be great. Yes. The issue is when you turn it into an assembly line. And that's so clearly what has happened here. Yes. This is not, oh, I'll make a, this is not like, you know, James Cameron never got to make his Spider-Man, but this is his passion project. And I don't care what character you tell me, James Cameron is going to make a comic book adaptation. I'm in. Yeah, right. Yeah. But that list of creators is so short yeah. that like anything else just reeks of, I want the scraps of what Marvel has left. And here's what alarmed me about the Silk show. Quote, the first of a suite of live action TV series based on the Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters, which includes over 900 characters. What? That is a it's, red flag. That's scary. I almost don't even care if Silk is good or bad. I'm just so petrified that what's coming behind this that's yeah. going to just tarnish the waters around things like Loki or the boys or what we hope, you know, X-Men 97 could be. Like, there will be great product in the marketplace, but if it's surrounded by trash... People will ignore them. People will not see the greatness and they'll leave the genre. Yeah. I was doing some research, Brian, on the era of the Westerns. Yes. I was reading and I was like, and, and do some research yourself, guys, and, and just look up the amount of Westerns that were pulling, pushing, just pushing, pushing, and then it just died away. We still get Westerns. We get the 310 to humans. We get Tombstone. We get the Unforgiveness. We... Every once in a while, we get those stories that are just amazing. Yellowstone, right? And that's where I think the genre is going to head back towards yeah. at some point. Well, obviously, we've reached its peak, I think, with Endgame, right? Yeah, because after right. Endgame, that's it. The Wakanda Forever numbers tell you there's fatigue. That num yeah. th that film yeah. should be making 20 to 25% more bank than it, than it is every single day. And it's yeah. not the movie's fault because the movie's good enough. That movie yes. in 2018, 2019 is making more money. Period. Yes. yes. Same movie. Absolutely. It almost it's, it's like it almost sucks that Wakanda Forever had to be involved in this phase. Yeah. Right? I'm actually disappointed in Amazon. I know what they're doing. Yeah. But like Amazon has the boys. Amazon has Invincible. Amazon mm. was making some inroads with truly original, awesome programming. And like Sony doesn't have a streamer. So I understand mm. why Sony called Amazon up and said, Can you help from a funding yeah. standpoint and a, and a publicity standpoint? But man, why this? Yeah. Why this? There's so much other stuff you can do, man. Put me on a, on a, I'll pitch you Voltron. What's up? I'll pitch you that. If you want something new, I'll pitch you Voltron. I'll pitch you a real GI Joe. I'll pitch you a, re, a, a going back. Listen, I'll have your brand. I can pitch so much stuff, Brian. I have so many dope shows in, in my head. By but, the way, li live action, live action TV GI Joe is not that hard. When, when you see what's out there, whether it's Jack Ryan or the Terminal List or Extraction, like what they're able to do in the television format and military yeah. stuff, it is not hard to make good G.I. Joe show with the amount of characters that show produced. Terminal List? There's a lot of dope stuff out there, man. Instead, we get Snake Eyes origin story. <laughs> oh my God. That's what we get instead. Oh, my God. And, and, and listen, if you think about what's what happened 
this is the parallel, I think, or the analogy that I would put to what happened to Wakanda forever. Although it wasn't the same Transformers. Transformers. We got a dope movie. And then everything else after that was horrendous until we got a good movie. Bumblebee. Bumble I liked Bumblebee. Bumblebee is very good. But nobody it's underrated gave a second because look. of what came it's underrated because of what happened with of course. three, four, and five. Yeah. Of course. And those joints made money. I don't know how, but it made money because there was an appetite elsewhere yeah. for it, but not in not here. Yeah. And so to 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 sort of talk about is this the end of the will this be the end of the superhero genre? In my opinion, it no. But it will certainly be similar to the westerns, and we'll get those quality films that just they're just not going to be as. Come on, every week Brian is like. You know, it's something new, and, and then and it's bad, and then we gotta wait for something else, and it, the confidence, the excitement is gone. Yeah, I'm excited for Quantum Mania, but that's it for now. You're excited, but I would say my box office predictions for that have come down because of yeah. how Wakanda Forever did. Like, I don't think that's going to approach a billion dollars, even if it's good. I see the problem is. You're back Marvel to reality. Got, Marvel got to a stage where the non-comic book audience, which at the end of the day is what drives huge numbers, basically felt like if I go to the theater and I plunk down my money, I am guaranteed to have a good time. I'm guaranteed to walk out of the theater happy, had fun, enjoyed what I saw. We are not at the stage where everyone is assuming the worst, but you are at the stage where it's no longer a certainty for anybody, yeah. right? Mm. We've known for DC, it's been a crapshoot for <laughs> 10 plus years. And like, like I said, some of the best things that this genre has produced in the last 10, 20 years have been DC, right? Mm. Dark Knight is still in the, you know, most people have that in the top three of anything the genre. The Batman for me, is, Batman, for me, Batman begins, but go ahead. Yeah, but I'm Batman, saying, so, yes. yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. DC's high moments are still incredibly high, either financially, critically, or both. But that's always been a coin flip. You've always yeah. had that, like, I don't know what I'm going to get if I go to the theater. And Marvel <laughs> has slipped closer to that in the past 18, 24 months with yeah. Eternals, with Thor, Love and Thunder. Even with Doc Strange, you know, it's just been more polarizing, the response to these movies. But when I see stuff like this, like, what, that's the thing when I went to see Morbius was like, this didn't have a chance. Like, there's no <laughs> version of this film that's watchable. There's no version of this film that I would recommend to anybody. Shout and out so to the dude from... Uh... Um, House of Dragon that was able to climb That's his Smith. way out of it. <laughs> That's it. And ironically, yes. ironically, you know who actually loved Morbius and I blew my mind was Keanu. Keanu Reeves? Keanu Reeves loves Morbius. Said it publicly. Loves that movie. Whatever. And good luck with Constantine. <laughs> so, but when you see the studio that brought you Morbius, brought you Venom, and you see that end scene in Morbius where Vulture reappears in a very ham-handed cutscene, and then you see this, and you're like, "These guys, these these executives don't get it. This is a if and audiences are way too sophisticated. They smell a pure crash cash grab when they see one, and they know of that's course. what this is. They know it. And like even DC, as I said, when DC hits its home run." It's because they get Chris Nolan or they get Todd Phillips, but they get that, they get the right filmmaker in the right spot who delivers something innovative. Yes. Sony doesn't even have that. Well, who who is the great creator that they're working with that's produced something where you're like, as I said, where you're just like, I'll take it on faith. They don't have yeah. anybody in the stable. Yeah. 
I mean, you take, honestly, you would take that job to throw your, throw your body in front of a lot of these projects. That's what you do. Like you'd be there to basically be like, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're, we're not going out like that. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you use the, the analogy of the, of the Western and it's so true. I mean, every genre in Hollywood that's had its heyday has eventually had its downfall. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love the Magnificent Seven. Uh, you'll not, the Antoine Fuqua one is okay. I mean, the original one that was based on the Seven Samurai, Yul Brynner, Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, James Coburn, a lot of them in their first roles, Robert Vaughn. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. There's like five Magnificent Seven movies. <laughs> and they are horrendous. Even after the first one, they get yeah. so bad. Yeah. So bad. That's what I mean. It's like, but that first one is an all time. If you were forced to be the Kevin Feige of Sony, and this is all the IP you do have access to, what would you do with it? I would call Kevin Feige, yo, how can we work this out? Because I want to, I want this to be. I want to tell our stories here, right? But when we come together, with Spider Man needs to talk to Johnny Storm and stuff like that. Let's keep that going. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to expand that past Spider Man, right? Yeah, I, I would expand Spider Man, but fine. I would not make the mistakes that they're making with these characters and letting people do whatever the hell they want to do with them. If you want to know who this character is, go to the freaking comic books, read it, and make them like that. Work your way towards that. That is the inspiration right there. Not this other crap. That's the way I would handle it. And I would keep my relationship with Kevin Foggy like that. And that's it. I said that they can do it, but I don't think they can do it. I don't believe they can do it. And this, my friends, prove it. Morbius proved it. If, if you had any doubts, Morbius proved that they can't do it. I don't need to give them a second chance. Venom 2 was horrendous. I don't care what nobody says. I agree. They got away with it because of Hardy. Hardy exactly. carried that movie. He carried that movie. He carried both of them. Like yeah. He basically probably was... Two thirds of that box office is just him yeah. being him and frontlining it. Yeah, he isn't that dude. When he goes into a performance, he performs. Yeah, you know, and I like watching Tom Hardy. But I, in the Venom movie, I don't want to watch Tom Hardy. <laughs> you know, I want to see Eddie Brock, which I think yeah. he still does a great job. But there's really no direction there. I there think. was also no evolution from one to two. That's my, exactly. my biggest complaint was it was kind of more of the same. Another symbiote fight, you know, Harrelson versus Riz Ahmed. There just wasn't that much. Yeah. Different. I so, mean, that, that, there's the problem, Ryan. Yeah. When you don't have Spider-Man in there, you start to notice. Bingo. That's what I would say. If I was in the room, I would say, you don't have 900 characters. You have one. <laughs> You have one North Star around everything else. So if you want to build, you need to build through Spider-Man. You need to, you, you can't do Sinister Six movies without Spider-Man. Spider-Man has to be what puts them over. And that's what builds to what, you know, they did it in No Way Home. They kind of did the, the light multiversal version of Sinister Six. But you could do the real one. You could yeah. do a legit from the comics build toward Spidey versus that, the Rogue's that, Gallery. That, that, those movies have to, to be see. big. Those but movies have to be big. Has, but Spider Man has to push that forward. It's exactly. not the villains. Exactly. Yeah. I got to believe the hatred that these villains have to a Spider Man that they're willing to band together to destroy him. I want to. I want to feel that. 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 I don't know, Brian, that, that feeling like, oh, snap, they're going to get spot. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just yeah. sit there and watch a movie. Yeah. I want to be engaged in his story. That's why I <sighs> think that Venom, movies like Venom and Joker actually hurt the genre in the long run because they were so successful. It made studios think we can oh, get we can away. Do, we can, yeah. 
yeah. without Batman and without Spider-Man. And it's like, that's lightning in a bottle, man. That, <laughs> that is not the norm. Yeah. We're in, it's in a sad state. But let's see, Brian. I know we're painting a very gloom and doom picture of what Sony will do with the Spider-Man universe. But I don't really have a lot of confidence confidence in um, across the Spider-Verse. Again, it just feels like, can you can you actually level up? I'm excited to see it because the first one is really good, but like, yeah. it, it just didn't feel, it, it just, is that something you can actually outdo yourself? It's Big tough. Time. I don't know. That's, That's tough. tough. That's tough, Brian. That's tough. Only very few films. It, th- can it be in that uh, elite um, part two, uh, I guess, um, list of films like Terminator 2? Um, what other <laughs> yeah, sequels? Aliens. <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, Empire. Can it do that? <laughs> That's what I think they're aiming to do, right? That's what I think when you do a sequel, that should, that should, that should be your goal, right? It is, but I think that people forget like the norm in Hollywood and Empire Strikes Back is the best example of this. Yeah. It didn't used to be that the second movie was bigger than the first at the box office. Empire Strikes Back, look at the box office numbers, not even anywhere close to New Hope. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's most people will tell you it's a better movie. It's, yes, it's, yes. it's aged as the better movie. Yes. It was really only in the last 20 years, and maybe Terminator 2 was the, or at 30, if we want to go to Terminator 2, where like the sequel became a bigger deal than the original. Yeah. Like there's a lot of great franchises where the sequels were entertaining, but the box, but the numbers went down. Like mm-hmm. Die Hard was like that. Like Die Hard 2 is fine. It's not bad. Yeah. But it didn't do any, it didn't do what Die Hard did. Yeah. You know, but then like, yeah, Terminator 2, and then, even stuff like X2, X2 outdid X, you know, X-Men. Um, that is true. Right? And like... Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. <laughs> and then you got into the Nolan verse where like Dark Knight blows up, like doubles Batman Begins and like everyone starts... Th- and Marvel starts doing its thing. Where like, yeah. you know, people forget like Dark World did a lot more than Thor 1. People don't remember that, but that's yeah, yeah, factually yeah. true. Yeah. But then we just got used to it. It was like, oh, yeah. like Winter Soldier doubles up Captain America one and like that's deserved but I'm just saying we got so used to that that studios are like great I just got to get to the second one get to the third one that's automatic yeah. Yeah. and it's not that's not the way it used to be and now yeah, we're getting yeah. back to the sequel doing less than the original let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of the developments over at Sony and Amazon with the Spider-Verse situation again there's going to be fans out there for some of these characters that they try to put out but some of the ones that are already in development and uh and that's that that line that you said is crazy <laughs> that joint is crazy 900 characters <laughs> sweet really scary stuff let us know in the conversation below what you guys think remember to hit that like and subscribe button we'll see you next time on the nerd gym report